What's up guys, my name is Liam, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Ragnarok Meow Mouse PCB internal upgrade for your Final Mouse Starlight 12. This does give you the capability to have a 4K polling rate, so what are my thoughts on it, and is this going to be the perfect upgrade for you? Let's check it out. All right guys, and before we get started today, I did want to let you know that these were sent out to me by MetKeys. However, everything you're going to be hearing in this video are going to be my own words and my own opinions. So I had MetKeys send me out both the small and the medium version, and once I got these in the mail, I immediately modified my small version, so I've been testing it out and using it out so I can share my thoughts and opinions on you guys. And in this video, I'm going to go through a detailed install. I'm going to install the PCB in my medium Poseidon to show you guys how I did it. But before we get started, I did want to throw out my thoughts and opinions on how it actually performs that way you even know if you want to go through with it or if it is something that is worth your time and i must say that i am very impressed by the quality that this comes with to be completely honest with you guys i don't even notice a difference in the overall feeling there's nothing that stands out this is a completely stock untouched uh, Starlight 12. This is the last legend. I've done absolutely nothing to it. So using these side by side, you know, obviously then using different switches in here, they do feel a little bit lighter. I opted for the Juano Blue Shell Pink Dots. So aside from that, I don't have any complaints. And again, has been working perfectly. So aside from the fact you do have the 4K pulling rate, you know, a little bit better performance there. It does feel a little bit smoother, obviously over the 1K. Again, if I would have noticed a difference just touching these in the hand, I wouldn't even be able to tell you that this one was modded or not. The side buttons have been working flawlessly clicks one and two have been working flawlessly and i do believe they use a little bit of a different encoder in here but again it feels absolutely great and in fact i was actually playing around with this mouse before i modded it and after i modded it, i truly think that it even feels better than it did before it was modded and just to show you guys the comparison the stock version right here i got coming in at approximately 46.1 grams i did actually use the 250 milliamp battery that does come included with it you do have the option as well i could have thrown out a 150 milliamp hour battery in here it would have cut off an additional three grams but as you can see with the mod kit it did actually drop the weight down 45.2 grams with the 250 milliamp hour battery so it's even lighter than my stock last legend i am really happy that i picked this up and decided to check it out because it does feel like all around just an upgrade over the stock version to me so before i open the box here i do want to let you know that this does not come with switches so you will actually have to buy three switches of your choice you can use whatever you want again i am really enjoying these Juana blue shell pink dots they're my favorite switches so i'm actually going to be using them inside the medium version as well and you will need three switches one for mouse one and two and one for the center scroll wheel you also do need to solder these switches into the pc be itself so this does take a little bit of work and it is a little bit of a project so if you're not familiar with soldering or you don't have any experience you can try it out I'll do my best i can to show you how i do it in this video but i did want to give you a heads up that it does require some soldering of your own to get this to work properly and inside the box once you do open this up it does come with a user manual up here at the top you do have the pcb and then when you do open this up in the bottom it does come with a usb-c cable this is the side buttons right here. Real easy plug and play stuff. Again, it does come with a 250 milliamp hour battery. They do include these dot skates, which have been working really well. And then it does come with the uh, receiver for the 1K polling rate. And then this is the actual 4K dongle itself. And before we jump into installing this stock, we have this sitting at 48.6 grams for the medium Poseidon. So to start out here, I'm just gonna kind of zoom through this for you guys. First off, you obviously need to remove the feet from the bottom of the mouse. And just a quick note, if you plan on using the original skates that you have on here or the stock skates, whatever come on it, you do not need to remove the top skates because there's only screws here at the bottom. I am using the T5 screw head. When you do open this up, you do want to remove it from the rear. You kind of want to lift it up and slide forward and it should just come out just as simple as that. Just a quick note on some of the newer versions of the Final Mouse, they did actually use a hot glue gun to glue the point right here, right here, 
and over here as well. So what I had to do when I installed the smaller version is I had to use these cutters to just kind of go over the surface, cut off the hot glue before I was able to remove the PCB itself. But just keep in mind if you are doing that to only make sure you're cutting the glue, you do not want to cut these points right here because these are the points that actually do fasten the PCB to the base plate. There are four clips that are actually fastening the PCB to the base plate here. There's one here, one here, one up here, and one over here. So as you're removing this out, you just wanna kind of pop these points off. And again, this is a very lightweight and flexible bottom shell. So do be very careful when you are doing this so you don't snap the bottom base plate or break any of these parts. I always recommend that you disconnect the battery first. That way you don't touch the PCB and cause any shorts. There you have it, just as simple as that. We have the base plate prepped and ready to go. So let's go into setting up the PCB. So here we have the medium PCB. And the next step is we're going to solder the switches. Uh, you're gonna be soldering one here, here, and here. And as you can see here, there's a little dot. What you're gonna wanna do is when you have the switch, it is gonna be facing up on every single one of them. So do make sure you have them in the right direction. And I'm actually gonna be using my helping hands to prop the switch because when you are soldering this, what you wanna make sure you're doing is first off, you need to turn it upside down. So I am gonna be using these clamps to hold the switch in place as I'm doing that. And you wanna make sure that the switch is pressed down nice and firm and it is actually flush with the PCB itself so that it operates properly. So when I clamp it in, I just clamp it through the bottom part. And you gotta be careful when you're doing this because you know if you put it too far to the edge, it can pull the switch to the side and tilt it. So again, just make sure that however you clamp or however you're propping it down, that it is flat there. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'll just solder that top lead and then I will remove the clamp after I solder the top lead. When you do this, you wanna touch down on both the pin and the PCB and you wanna make it quick. You don't wanna leave it on there too long, but you want just enough to go ahead and make sure that you do seal the hole there. But again, since I got that first lead done, I'm just gonna go ahead and check my work here really quickly. It seems to be in there perfect, and it is sitting perfectly flush with the PCB still. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up these other two leads. All right, so when you're done, go ahead and check, make sure everything looks good. Make sure that the switch is still operating as it should. And now I'm ready to move on to the next one. So same thing on this, after I did solder that top lead, come in here, check my work, make sure everything is laying flat and flush with the actual PCB itself. And one thing you can do quickly, if you do solder the first lead and you do notice that it is kind of sticking up in the back or it's crooked in any way, shape or form, at this point, at least you should have some contact on the actual PCB itself. Another way you can do this is you can one hand it, push the switch in here and hold it with one hand. Now that you actually have some solder on the board, your hand should be freed up and you can push on the switch flat against the PCB as you touch that lead with your soldering iron to make sure that it does get flattened out. Remove the soldering iron, it'll harden, and then you'll be good to go. All right, so here's what the first two switches look like. Everything looks nice and flush and perfectly as it should be. Now let's just finish up with the last switch. I did use just a light amount of solder. You want just enough to actually make connection all the way around the leads itself. I don't recommend using too much or too little to where it cause a poor connection. So everything looks nice and perfect here with the soldering job. The switches look nice and flush. So now it's time to move on to the next step. So all you have to do is come to the original PCB and just remove the scroll wheel just like that. And then you can come over here and you can put it inside of the new PCB. Do make sure that you have it pushed in all the way and then give it a shot and test it out. The side buttons do come with an additional ribbon in here in case this one gets broken, but as long as you're easy with it, it should be fine and you shouldn't have to worry about using that, but I'd hold on to it just in case you do need it. You need to slide this little ribbon right here down into this part and there is this little black plastic piece. You actually need to just kind of pull it out and lift it up like that before you can actually push the ribbon in there. Then you'll just simply slide the ribbon down in there and you wanna make sure that it does get pressed in all the way and it's sitting in the bottom. Once it is pressed in all the way, 
you can just come to the side like that and push in the side plastic piece right here to make sure that it is fastened in place. All right, so next up, we're just going to drop the PCB back into the base plate. Again, you do wanna be mindful of these clips here on the side. So you wanna make sure that you get the scroll wheel nice and centered properly. And then just simply, I like to bend the base plate to the side like that to get these clips in here and get them fastened around the PCB. And again, do remember to be careful so that you're not over bending anything and have the potential to break or snap the bottom base plate. Then once I have that installed, I will go ahead and lift up the side buttons and you just slide the side buttons into this piece and you wanna give it a nice snug push. So we're almost all done. One thing I wanna do really quick is I do wanna just go ahead and throw the top shell on the base plate. I'm not gonna secure it in place or anything. I just wanna make sure that everything is installed correctly, that the switches feel nice, that the side buttons are working perfectly and everything is as it should be. So as you're testing this, you wanna make sure that everything on the base plate is aligned with the top shell. And I do push kind of firmly here on the rear so you know that you're getting the correct experience. And then I'm just gonna test out the scroll wheel, mouse one and two, and that the side buttons are functioning perfectly. And for me, luckily, everything seems to be working right in line with how it should be. So now I'm just gonna open it back up and I'm going to install the battery and we should just be about all set. I try and make sure that I do have it as centered as possible. That way it doesn't throw off the balance. And I will check that out and give it one final go before I make sure everything is all set. And then simply just plug this in and you are good to go. All right, we have a light so we know that it's on and it is working. But before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the center position to turn it off. So the center balance on the base plate feels on point like it should be. So now I just gotta put everything together. You just wanna make sure that the side buttons are in the correct hooks where they're supposed to be. Again, just make sure you give a final push down here on the side buttons. And then as you place the shell together, I like to go from the front and I like to angle it down like this. Cause again, you wanna make sure that you click these bottom pieces into the front of the shell there and that the scroll wheel does make clearance. Go all the way around the shell, make sure everything looks aligned perfectly as it should as you're putting pressure on the back of the mouse with the base plate. And then just do one final check on all the functions on the mouse and make sure everything is working perfectly as it should be. All right guys, so here we have the new PCB in here with the stock skates installed back on the mouse. And it looks like we got this coming in. It actually is coming in a little bit heavier on the medium version. So as you can see, it's really not that far off. I'm not sure why my smaller version was coming in a little bit lighter. It could be because of the dot skates or something like that, but you could play around with it. Either way, everything about this feels spot on. The weight and balance feels perfect and it feels honestly just as good as the stock version, if not better. I kind of do like this encoder a little bit more than the stock one. It feels a little bit more solid, a little bit more defined steps, and mouse one and two do feel a bit lighter, and the side buttons, they feel absolutely great. So next up, what you'll need to do to hook this to your computer is you'll need to power it on. If you have this switched in the middle position, it's off. You can switch it up to enable the Bluetooth mode or switch it down to power it on with the receiver. As you can see, you have that green light there. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna hold down mouse one, two, and the center scroll wheel button for a few seconds here. And then once you do that, as you can see, it starts flashing this green LED indicator quicker. So once you have it set up like that, all you'll need to do is plug the 4K dongle into your computer into a USB-C, and it should sync up with the 4K receiver. And then finally, on the front of the MetKeys webpage, they do have this little link down here where you just click driver, and it does give you the option to download the drivers. It does have some MP4 videos to kind of help guide you through the instructions on how to install this in case there's anything I missed or didn't go over and cover if you do need to use that as well as a resource. But aside from that, all I did first was I installed the software, made sure everything was up and running properly. This does allow you to adjust the debounce setting, set the 4K polling rate and your DPI. These are the settings I've been working right here and they've been working great. 
And then after that, the only other thing is there is a firmware update for this mouse and for the actual receiver itself. And there are two separate firmwares. If you look at the name of these files, there is a separate firmware update for the small version indicated with this S for small. And then you'll look for the M here for the medium version. So do make sure that when you are installing this, you are using the correct one. If you try and use the incorrect one, it will not work. All right, guys. So that about wraps things up on the Ragnarok Meow Mouse. Like I said, I've been really enjoying on the small. And after I did just do the install, on the medium just right away it feels really incredible and i honestly feel like that was pretty simple for me anyways to do so if this is interested in something that you're doing i'd give this two thumbs up i feel like this has brought new life back into my starlight 12s and i've been really enjoying it all right guys so if you have any questions or feel like i left anything out please let me know down in the comments below if you are interested in picking this up and supporting the channel i have left affiliate links down below in the description and if you've enjoyed watching this video and you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel thank you guys so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next one.